All right, class, we are in our next algorithm for sorting. This is the insertion sort. Now, in the AP exam, it's unlikely that you're going to be asked a question about coding this particular algorithm, but you do need to know how to trace this algorithm, and you're going to need to know how to code it for uh, some of your exercises in class. So let's first trace this, and then we're going to learn how to code it in Java. So the insertion sort works a little bit differently than our friend the selection sort. In selection sort, we were always looking forward in the array. In the insertion sort, we're going to be moving forward, but we're going to be looking and sorting backwards, if that makes sense. So we're going to assume that the front of the list is sorted, and we're going to insert each item as we move through into that sorted list that we have created. So let's take a look at how we do this. So the way that we do this is we are going to actually start at the second element. So we're going to start at index 1. And we assume that the beginning of our uh, list is sorted. So we're going to have our sorted list here. We're going to assume that that's sorted. And what we do is we take out this element here. We take this out as 1. And we're going to compare it to each item. And as soon as we either hit the front of the array, or we find a position where it's smaller than the current item, then we're going to insert it in there. Along the way, as we work, we're going to be shifting each element over into this blank spot. So this spot is now blank. Or it's not blank, but it's available for us to fill in. So we're going to compare 1 to 5. 1 is smaller than 5, but we've also hit the beginning of the array. So we're going to swap these two elements, and our new array, the beginning, is going to look like this, 1, 5. Now we're going to pull out our element 4 here, and we're going to compare 4 to 5. 4 is smaller than 5, so as soon as I see that, I'm going to swap. That's my trigger, that this number is smaller, the 4 is smaller than 5. So I'm going to swap that in. And it becomes 1, 4, 5. I next drop down my 6. Well, my 6 is bigger than my 5. And so my trigger doesn't go off. I actually can't even loop through here. So I immediately go ahead and copy that 6 into where I am. And of course, these still numbers are sitting here. We drop down the 3. So this would be 6. This is 3. We compare that 3. Oops, pardon me. I mis miswrote here. This isn't 5, 5. This is 5, 6. We compare this 3. And we go through the list. So we look backwards, comparing the 3. It's not smaller than, uh, it's smaller than 6. It's smaller than 5. It's uh, smaller than 4, but it's bigger than 1. So since it's bigger than 1, what I've been doing this whole time, as I've been searching, I've also been copying over. Okay, so I've been copying these over one at a time, and now that I see that 3 there, I can insert it. So I have 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then finally I drop down my 2. I compare my 2, and I compare 2 to 6. 2 is smaller, shift it over, 2 is smaller than 5, shift it over, 2 is smaller than 4. Shift it over, 2 is smaller than 3. Shift it over, 2 is bigger than 1. So 2 gets slotted right in there. And I finally have my sorted list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Sorry, my sizing got a little off, but you get the point, right? So we finally have inserted and sorted our list there. Okay, so this is the basics of how the algorithm works in uh, practice and how we trace it. Let's look at, let's look at it in code. So um, actually, before we do that, let's just describe what we're going to do. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, take out index looking at each item. We're going to compare that item to the previously sorted list. So we're going to compare it to the sorted list. As soon as I find an item smaller, I'm going to insert into that position. So as soon as I see something smaller in my order, I'm going to insert right before that. So uh, when, uh, when a smaller item, and we'll put smaller in quotes, it depends on what you sort by. When a smaller item is found, and you could also sort this as bigger, you could reverse this to sort um, big to small. Uh, when a smaller item is found, we are going to insert at that location. Okay, so as soon as a smaller fighter item is found, we insert at that location. That's the gist of what we do. Um, location uh, or if we reach the beginning of the list. Beginning of the list. Okay, let's look at this in code. So what does this look like in code? Well, as I said, we're going to look at each item. So looking at each item, which of course tells us that we are going to need a for loop. And because we need each item, and we're going to be comparing it, we're going to need to know the index, so we're going to need a standard for loop here. So we're going to need a standard for loop. And our standard for loop is going to get this. It's going to get uh, int, let's do this, int x is equal to zero, and our x is less than our array, that length, and we're going to say x plus plus. Okay, so we did this little thing in our tracing here where we pulled it out, right? So because we're copying over, because we're doing this algorithm where we're, we're copying things over right here, we need to save this because we don't want it overwritten, right? We're doing a swap algorithm in the middle of our search. So we're doing swap in the middle of our search. So we need to save that. So we're going to save this as our key value. So we're going to save an integer and we'll save it as our key value, meaning our search value. And that's going to get the value of r at x. So we've protected our x. We know we've saved that value for later. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to search through the rest of the array. And actually, you know what? This doesn't start at 0. Let's start at 1, right? We can start at 1 because we're going to take the second item and compare it back to the first item. Okay, so we're going to take that item, compare it back to the first item. And let's see what we can do with this. Comparing backwards, we're going to need to go backwards. So I'm going to do this a little bit untraditionally from what you might see uh, in other places with this algorithm. We're actually going to do a for loop. We're going to do kind of a fancy for loop here. So our for loop is going to start with our integer. Um, actually, you know what? Now I think about it, I can't do this based on my notes. I can't do this because we're going to need that int x later. So we're going to do it old school. We're going to do it the, the traditional way. We're going to do int, and we're going to say uh, int, we'll call this index. 
So our, int, our index, our searching index, is going to be here. And our searching index is going to get our value of x. So this is where we're going to start searching. Where we are. And then we're going to do our while loop. So our while loop here is uh, going to be our control structure. And we're going to do two things in here. Remember, there's two stopping conditions. Our first stopping condition is getting back to the beginning of the list. The other stopping condition is finding an element that is, in fact, smaller than our current element. But we're going to do the inverse of that, right? So we're going to say if our index, as long as our index is greater than or equal to 0, as long as index is greater than or equal to 0, and our key, and as long as our key is in fact smaller than the current element that we're searching. And the element will be our r at our index. So r at index. OK, so let's review this. The Index at zero, as long as we are greater than zero, so we haven't reached the beginning of the list. If we reach the beginning of the list, we stop, right? Because that means that we're, we found the smallest item. Or our key value, as long as our key value here, let's say key value is two, right? As long as our key value is smaller than our values we're looking at, we're going to continue. So as long as it's smaller, it's going to continue. As soon as it finds something that's either the same value or bigger, right, then it's going to, or as long as this is bigger than this, it's going to keep going. So as long as it's smaller than these numbers, as soon as it's bigger than this number, it's going to stop. Okay? So, what do we do when we're in here? Well, the thing that we do is we're going to do that swap. We need to do that quick swap. We need to move this element here, our 6, into our 2. So how do we do that? Well, we move whatever our current index minus 1 into our current index. So we say r at our index gets the value of whatever is preceding it. Now we need to create a stopping condition. We need to actually move through the loop. So what do we do? We decrement index to move forward. That's two minuses. Let me uh, write that a little bit more clearly. Index minus minus. We move forward in the list looking backwards. So we move down and we copy over each time. We don't care that there's doubles in there because we've already saved key as a temp, right? Our, our, our x is going to get copied over. That's fine because we have our key. So as soon as we get here and we do these, we meet these two conditions, we've confirmed that our number is the next biggest number in the line, or we've reached the beginning of the list, meaning it's the smallest number possible. Open that up. So we're still inside this for loop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to swap in to our new position, our index position. We're going to swap in our key value. So we're going to move into index, r at index, is going to get the value of key. And we close our for loop. So we've moved through. We found where our number is bigger than or equal to the number in front of it. And we have 
determined. Oh, I'm sorry. This is supposed to be index minus one. Woo! That was close. The number in front of it, right? It's got to be the number in front of it. So the number in front of it is smaller. Index minus one. Ooh, almost made a big mistake there. We're good though. We made it. So uh, this is the basic insertion sort algorithm. Let's really quickly do our big O notation analysis. Remember O of one for this. O of one for each of these lines. We've got a loop. Let's think about what the worst case scenario for this while loop is here. Well, the worst case scenario in this while loop is that we're all the way at the end of the list and that number needs to go all the way to the beginning of the list, which means that this is going to be O of N in our worst case scenario. Now this is inside, we've got uh, more O of ones here. And this is O of N. We've got O of N inside of O of N. So that means we're going to have multiplication. And since we have two O of N's, we can immediately ignore all of the O of 1's. So we only have the two O of N's. An O of N inside of another O of N, we already know this. And this is automatically, this outer for loop, of course, is automatically O of N because no matter what, we loop through the entire list. Again, yes, it is from uh, x equal to 1. So it isn't the entire n, but as we've talked about, if you have a million or a billion items in your array list, this won't work. So here we go. Or that, that won't make a difference. So this is O of n squared. All right, so that is our insertion sort algorithm. I'll see you guys in the next one.